Good morning. I'm going to continue our devotions today in the uh, study of Paul's prayers for the early churches and some reflections on those Christians that he knew and loved and what he wanted for them, what he prayed for them, and ask ourselves the question, would he pray any differently for us today? It can give us great insight into what we should be as disciples individually and as the Church of Christ. And our circumstances are vastly different than theirs, but I think we'll find that what Paul prayed for these churches applies just as much to us today. And today we're looking at his prayer for the Christians in the ancient Roman city of Philippi. And I'll read from chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is one long sentence. It's a classic Paul sentence, and we'll unpack it to find the key thought. And you can find it pretty easily. It's that our love may abound or increase, just grow more and more. It's a progressive thing. It's interesting that one of my favorite verses from Paul is found just a, a few words earlier. He says, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ, when Jesus comes again and wraps up time and uh, goes about uh, completing history and establishing a new heaven and a new earth, that, that our salvation, God will continue to work that through and, and make it complete. And part of the completion of that work in us that he began is that our love grow more and more. Note that this is a, a serious love. It's a thoughtful, it's an intelligent love. He says that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. And we need that kind of love these days. Our journey as Christians is not a simple one. It's not a, it's not a light and fluffy one. We, we wrestle with issues and circumstances and, and people and relationships and challenges. And we need to be thoughtful in our love. We need knowledge of God. We need discernment so that we can choose the best way, but always the way of love. Now, I'm convinced that this would be Paul's prayer for St. Paul's and for every believer today, because it would be his prayer for any church, any Christian, anywhere, at any time, because it was Jesus' prayer for his disciples and his command to his disciples. Think about John's Gospel. Think about the hours before Jesus was arrested and crucified. Think about that conversation that took place in that upper room and maybe in various uh, points along the way that Jesus was more concerned about his disciples loving each other than he was about anything else. He was concerned about the unity of his people. And the reason for that is that God is love. God is the essence of love. And Christians that don't love, a church that doesn't love and isn't characterized by love, simply doesn't reflect God. John tells us pretty bluntly 
that it, it is unlikely that a Christian that does not love, a person that does not live according to love, doesn't really know God at all. You might think they do, might claim to. But if we do not reflect through the growth of love in our lives and in our church life, because God is the essence of love, then we're not with God's program. And that's why Paul prays this so deeply for Christians at all times. I'm going to read verse 10 again. So that, he prays this, so that you may approve, you may discover what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. In Paul, that word, or those words, so that, are the key, because they point out the purpose for which he has made this prayer. So everything that follows in, in this long Pauline sentence is the why, it's the purpose of our being uh, filled with his love. And that is that we may approve what is excellent. We might discover what is best. Um, love and, and good behavior and uh, these things, they go together in, in, God's, um, in God's way of doing things. And the result of our living in love and growing in love is that we will be able to discover the right way. We talked before about living a life worthy of the Lord. And we, dis we talked about discovering his will for us. Well, that is the purpose. It's so that we can grow in our knowledge of God, that we can prove what is excellent, what is the best outcome in any situation that we face, any dilemma, any challenge that the church faces, and ultimately so that we will be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Remember that Jesus talked to his disciples about being the vine, and they were the branches. Well, that's still true today. We can produce no fruit other than by abiding in Jesus. And we can't really live, we can't get our energy, we can't be connected to Jesus if we are resistant to his love. So let's take this seriously. Let's, let's learn what love is. Let's think that if Paul could pray for anything for us today, um, he would reflect God's will that we reflect God himself, and that we grow in our love. May that be true in your life this week. May it be true in mine and together over many months and as long as the Lord gives us that we grow in our love. Let's pray for a moment. God, our Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that we can love at all only because you first loved us. You showed us what love is. And we pray that we will take your command, Lord Jesus, seriously to love one another. And that we will make Paul's prayer for Philippi uh, our own prayer for ourselves and for our church, for our church family. That we grow in our love, that we abound in love. And that people around us will see that we love, that we love each other, that we love them that we're characterized by love and that they will then be drawn to you and find your love perfectly expressed through Jesus Christ. And we pray all of this in his name. Amen. God bless you and be good to you. We'll talk again.